Now, <clears throat> we come to the epaxial muscles. These are the muscles located above the transverse processes of the vertebral column. These muscles are covered on the caudal aspect by this white and glistening modified deep fascia. This is the thoracolumbar fascia. You need to reflect it to be able to see these muscles. Okay. Also, you need to reflect the latissimus dorsi muscle and the superficial muscles on the neck over there to be able to see these back muscles. These are three systems starting from the most lateral aspect is the iliocostalis system, the longissimus system which located at the intermediate aspect, and the most medial and deep system that is the transversus spinalis system. Let us take them one by one. Remember, these are the muscles that extend the vertebral column. <clears throat> now, starting with the iliocostalis, the iliocostalis originates from the iliac crest. In the most lateral aspect, this is the iliocostalis lumborum because it is located at the level of the lumbar vertebrae. It is attached to the lateral aspect of the transverse processes of the lumbar vertebrae. And it has a thoracic part that is narrow and thinner. And it go all the way to attach to the ferris rib and it may extend to the transverse process of C7. So all this one here, this is the iliocostalis thoracis. From here to the ilium is iliocostalis lumborum. It is the most lateral one. The intermediate one and the one after that, it's the very well developed longissimus system that extends all the way from the ilium to the head. At the origin here, the longissimus and the iliocostalis are completely fused with each other. You can't separate them. You can say this is a demarcation between the iliocostalis from the longissimus. So they are fused together. Just bear in mind that the most lateral system is, <coughs> excuse me, is the iliocostalis. And at the level of the thorax, there is a little bit of separation between the iliocostalis and the longissimus, so you can see the separation between them at this level here. Okay? Now, the longissimus also originate from the iliac crest as longissimus lumborum. From the lumbar region, when it starts off the thoracic region around the rib, it is longissimus thoracis. It will want to go all the way to the first rib. And the cervical part, which is longissimus cervices, extend to attach to the transverse processes of the cervical vertebrae. Let me draw your attention to the cervical part of the longissimus. It consists of four overlapping fascicles. This is one, two, three, four. All these together represent the cervical part of the longissimus system. <coughs> we said the longissimus system extends all the way to the skull. It has a most cranial part, that is the longissimus cavities, that go all the way and insert on <coughs> excuse me, the mastoid process of the, of the temporal bone. So we have longissimus cavities. We have longissimus cervices, longissimus thoracis, and we have longissimus lumborum at the lumbar vertebrae. Now, regarding the transversus spinalis system, that is located deeper and medial to the longissimus system. So they ask you only to dissect a couple of muscles of that system. The first one is the splenius, and the splenius is this big muscle here. You can't miss it. It's a huge muscle, okay? And the other muscle from this system is the semispinalis. And 
To see the semispinalis, you need to reflect the splenius muscle. And once you reflect the splenius, you will see this muscle that consists of two portions. The dorsal one with this tendinous striation here, this is the biventer. The other one, which is thicker, this is the, the complexes. So the biventer and the complexes, these two represent <clears throat> the semispinalis muscle. And the other one is the splenius. And the splenius is covering the semispinalis. Now, if you reflect the splenius, and if you go and separate the two heads of the semispinalis, which is the biventer and the complexus, okay, if you go deeper here, the white yellowish structure that you see down there in the neck, that is the nuchal ligament, which extends <coughs> from the spinous process of the atlas and from the spinous process of T1 and T2 and go and insert on the spinous process of, of the atlas. That is white. Okay. Let me try to focus here so you can see it better. Okay. If you look down here, that is the nuchal ligament. Okay, you need to separate okay, the two heads of the semispinalis, which is the biventer and the complexus, and you go deeper to that, this white structure that you see deep there, that is the nuchal ligament, which extend from the spinous processes of T1 and T2, and go and insert on the spinous process of, of the axis. Thank you.